Good morning, students. Um, yesterday we saw how uh, the non-cooperation movement started spreading in the areas which otherwise had always remained insulated and had always preferred a sense of privacy. They were never interested, the people who lived in jungles, they were never interested in interacting with the rest of the country and people of the rest of the country. But for the first time, when British started entering those areas, and as we had discussed, that those areas had had uh, hitherto never been entered by the earlier rulers, right from the Hindu rulers to even the Mughals who never entered those uh, jungles and those uh, areas uh, to collect taxes from the pastoralists uh, and uh, the people who lived in those jungles. But the, for the first time, British started actually entering those areas and uh, in, they started demanding uh, taxes from them uh, in return because the, the argument of the British was since, the, uh, since these uh, inhabitants uh, use uh, the uh, wood of the jungles uh, and wood happens to be and that is the tree happens to be the state property so uh, the these uh, these people would have to pay taxes and there was uh, uh, the whole uh, uh, the whole uh, uh, inhabitant community or rather in terms of uh, if you call it uh, the if you know the, the adivasi community uh, it rose in revolt okay and uh, once if you go to i don't know how many of you have ever been to uh, chota nagpur uh, that is the capital which has jharkhand uh, if you go to chota nagpur almost every town would have something or the other commemorating the memory of uh, the great birsa munda uh, uh, you know, right from landing at Rachi Airport, which also has the name Birsa Munda Airport, to anywhere you go in Chotanagpur, it is all Birsa Munda, Birsa Munda, and Birsa Munda. Now, who was Birsa Munda? And Birsa Munda was one of the great leaders of these Adivasis who used to live inside the jungles. And uh, the British did the same thing there. You know, they had started not you know, Please be don't uh, please don't be under the impression that all they the British started doing all this stuff when Mahatma Gandhi came to India. British had been doing this stuff for a long time. But it was only that when Mahatma Gandhi actually uh, galvanized all this resentment and anger uh, and it, everyone uh, in the country actually started knowing about it. But then uh, the, the unease, the unrest had always been there for, for, for a long period of time. And uh, as I was just mentioning, uh, Birsa Munda, uh, you know, he, uh, I remember, because I am from Jharkhand myself, uh, I know he was, he died at a very young age, just when he was barely 24, 25, uh, and he died uh, in the jail, um, he, because he was put behind the jails by uh, the Britishers, and he died barely at the age of 24, 25. I think in the uh, so in the year around 1900s. So uh, that is what we are talking about. That for the first area, for the first time, these areas, which usually used to be uh, peaceful, and these people uh, didn't want to come out ever. They wanted to mind their own business. For the first time, they also started becoming part of the uh, nationalism uh, mainstream. Okay, now let's go to. And we have seen uh, the unrest in the plantation areas as well uh, in Assam and those areas where uh, the people had been taken to cultivate and to grow tea because the British were very fond of tea and as I had said yesterday that uh, British had usually adopted the strategy of uh, 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 growing tea uh, if of course if the climate and the geography allowed it uh, in all the colonies where they ruled whether it was in Africa whether it was in Sri Lanka whether it was in India because they were so fond of tea not just um, uh, in, when they were living in India but they were so fond of tea that is the people were so fond of tea that is uh, even the people in England, that is. Now, uh, let's start today uh, this topic towards civil disobedience. Now, in, in February 1922, Mahatma Gandhi decided to withdraw the non-cooperation movement. He felt the movement was turning violent in many places and Satyagrahis needed to be uh, uh, needed to be properly trained before they would be ready for mass struggles. Then the Congress, some leader 
were by now tired of mass struggles and wanted to participate in elections to the provincial councils that had been set up by the government of India under the Act of 1919. They felt that it was important to oppose British policies within the councils, argue for reform and also demonstrate that these councils were not truly democratic. Students, this is a very, uh, very important paragraph, actually. Uh, I don't know why it is not mentioned, but then um, in, in February 1922, Mahatma Gandhi decided to withdraw the non-cooperation movement. We all know about that Chori Chora incident which had happened uh, in the district of Gorakhpur, that is uh, eastern of the Pradesh today, um, uh, that is uh, that then was a part of United Provinces, uh, where um, policemen were beaten and burned to death because the whole police thana was uh, lit on fire by the uh, by the Stagrais. Now, Mahatma Gandhi was rattled and so was the rest of the country because it was considered to be a non-violent protest and uh, uh, this kind of violence was definitely not acceptable to not just Mahatma Gandhi, many of the Indians, because they felt that uh, this kind of uh, uh, violence only uh, brings a disrepute to their movement, with the independence movement, and also gives the British an alibi or an excuse to get more and more brutal. So uh, Mahatma Gandhi felt uh, that this mob behavior where hundreds and thousands of people um, vandalize the property or uh, beat up and kill uh, the people who work for the British government. That was absolutely not what was the intention of Satyagraha, okay, because it was supposed to be a non-violent uh, protest. So, and that was one reason, and that, and the other reason was also that many within the Congress party felt that it was no point you know, fighting on the streets, getting beaten by the lattes all the time, uh, when the when the real change can be only brought about when you share that political power with the British. It is no point uh, just uh, uh, printing newspapers, expressing your regret and expressing your anger and expressing your distrust against the British, but uh, not uh, actually having anything to do with the uh, institutions of power. Because uh, it is through the institutions of power where you can actually bring out the real changes. Now, this is something uh, which was dividing the ideology or the thinking within the Congress, whereby some of them felt that they should remain purists, that is, they should remain out of all the British uh, uh, institutions. Uh, but then there were quite many within the Congress party who felt that uh, they would be able to bring about more constructive change. They would be able to play um, a more constructive role and a better role in bringing about changes right within the society if they really participate uh, with the British in those institutions of power and uh, and that is what was that is what is mentioned here. Not really democratic. C. R. Das and Motilal Nehru formed the uh, Swaraj Party within the Congress to argue for the return to council politics. That is, they should actually join these councils so that they can share power with the British and also uh, be uh, vocal about the problems within the institutions because they felt that it is no point uh, criticizing these councils and these uh, state institutions from. Uh, by staying uh, on the roads and staying outside them. They felt the real change, they would be able to bring about reforms if they actually wanted reforms by joining these institutions. Now, this was something which was clearly not seen by, in the similar fashion by the young and the revolutionary leaders like Jawaharlal Nehru and Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bose, who were actually in favor of a much more uh, energetic uh, response rather than this one. Uh, so, um, okay. So, in such a situation of internal debate and uh, dissension, two factors again shaped Indian politics towards 1920. The first was the effect of worldwide economic depression. Agricultural prices began to fall from 1926 and collapsed after 1930. And as the demand for agricultural goods fell and exports declined, peasants found it very difficult to sell their harvests and pay their revenue. By 1930, the countryside was in turmoil. Students, it is... Uh, 
it's a classic case where uh, how globalization had started taking roots even a hundred years ago okay uh, it is exactly a situation right now where if one part of the world uh, has uh, an uh, is under economic crisis uh, then it has a completely um, domino effect where everything starts falling all the chips start falling uh, that are connected to it okay so uh, this was uh, something which was happening even in uh, 1920 because the problem started in Europe and America but it ultimately started spreading to different parts of the world and in India would uh, not be any different and that is why Indians also started having problems and so there was a whole chaos and confusion no one was happy so things were actually getting very difficult for the British to manage um, and that is why uh, they started uh, thinking about in terms of bringing about some reforms so that the pressure uh, could uh, from them could be kind of uh, at least be lessened some kind of giving out something to the Indians uh, so that that enormous amount of pressure which was which they were encountering and agitation which they were encountering from all the corners from all sections of Indian society that could be taken care of and against this backdrop the new Tory government in Britain considered constituted a statutory commission under Sir John Simon set up in response to the Tory government is essentially students Britain Britain is mainly guided by two political parties okay unlike India where you uh, where you can't even count how many political parties are there. But in England, um, it's mainly, historically, it has been guided by the two political parties, the Tories, that is um, the Conservatives, and the Labour Party. Okay. Uh, uh, the Commission was to look into the functioning of the constitutional system in India and suggest changes. The problem was that the Commission did not have a single Indian member. They all were British. And... Uh, that is what was the problem that you have organized a committee you have set up a committee to look into the problems of uh, 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 Indians but uh, there is no Indian who can find a place in that committee so naturally it is uh, students just imagine imagine a situation where I want to find out the problems of people of their own and I form a committee but all the committee members are from probably Andhra Pradesh and Delhi and Haryana and Punjab and all parts of India except Dehradun. Now, do you think that committee would ever be able to really solve my problems? Yes. So this it was the same situation here. Indians did not trust this uh, uh, commission at all because uh, the commission was considered to be just a tick mark activity by Indians because. Um, had they been serious about their intentions, they would have certainly inducted some good members, Indian members, into this committee. Okay, uh, we shall uh, continue. This is a very important uh, topic, uh, students. Thanks.